Hi, I'm Reverend Tony, and I've got a spiritual challenge for you for the month of April on the theme of resistance. Are you up for the challenge? My spiritual challenge for you for this month of April is to begin a practice of Sabbath. Or if you already practice keeping Sabbath, to deepen your practice of keeping the Sabbath. Now, I don't mean the Sabbath necessarily, although that's great if you are a Jewish person who does practice the Sabbath. Awesome. I want to encourage all the rest of us to look at the idea of the Sabbath as a spiritual practice that can be of benefit for all of us. What does practicing a day or a time of rest have to do with the theme of resistance? Well, in Walter Brueggemann's book, Sabbath as Resistance, he talks about how there are two reasons for the Sabbath in the Torah. One is that God brought the Israelites out of slavery in the land of Egypt and the other is God rested on the seventh day of creation. He puts these two together, that resting on the seventh day or taking periods of rest, I would, I would argue, if you're not a Jewish person, is a way to actively resist the pharaohs of the world and the empire they represent. The pharaohs of the world represent tyranny, oppression, control, autocracy, and they don't want anybody to rest. Rest and leisure is for the privileged and powerful class. And that's not true. Everyone deserves rest. When you take a period of rest or keep an entire day of rest, you are saying no to a system that only values production, puts the worth of human beings and life in terms of dollar signs, and thinks commerce is the end-all be-all of our human existence. And all of that is not true. So I'm encouraging you in this month to take up the practice of keeping Sabbath. It is a way to resist all the tyranny and oppression in the world. Yes, I want you to actively stand up for black lives. I want you to stand up for trans kids. I want you to do everything you can to save our planet. Resist all the forces that perpetrate all kinds of injustice. Please do everything you can. But while you're doing that, if you don't take time to rest, you are going to burn out and exhaust yourselves. You have to trust there are plenty of us to get the job done. We have to work together and we all got to take turns resting and taking our turn resting. So what are you going to do during this practice of Sabbath? Well, that's up to you. Let's talk about that. Traditionally, the Sabbath means refraining from work. There are many rules and obligations regarding the Sabbath and the Torah, and the more orthodox or conservative one's Jewish practice, the more things that are forbidden on the Sabbath. But I want to concentrate on what we do do on the Sabbath. And we rest. All right, so let's not work. The reason I'm out here making this video is I'm out here with my dog Pancake, and Pancake and I take a walk every day sometimes in the morning, sometimes in the afternoon. And except for the days when I make a video like this, which is about once a week, the other six days of the week are just walking, paying attention to Pancake. Pancake is great at practicing Sabbath. Pancake will walk around the park here and then she'll just stop and sit. Reminds me to do the same. Just stop, sit, stand, look, breathe just be. You are a great Sabbath practitioner, my friend. Now this is how to practice Sabbath. Just sit and just be. Way to go, Pancake. Yeah, you're great at practicing Sabbath. You remind me how to do it, too. And the Sabbath is just for being. Practice being a human being, not a human doing. In his book, The Sabbath, the great Jewish scholar Abraham Joshua Heschel says that when the Romans encountered the Jewish people, they thought the Jews were nuts because once every seven days, they didn't work, they didn't do anything. They just took the day off. 
And to a Roman, this was absolutely insane because the purpose of life was to become renowned, to build a name for oneself, to become famous, to do great deeds. And if you rested once every seven days, that's one seventh of your life. You can't be doing good deeds to become renowned. And it was obvious that the Jewish people had an entirely different value system around that, that that was not the purpose of life. So what's the purpose of your life? Is it work? We all need to do some work. We all need to find out how to make a living. But I really believe all of us, whatever our schedule, even in the most difficult circumstances, there is time every week and usually even a little bit every day, even if it's five minutes, to put it all down, to rest, to just be. In Jewish tradition, the Sabbath begins at sundown Friday and ends at sundown Saturday and begins with a meal. It's a religious obligation celebrated for the most part, entirely at home. Lighting of Sabbath candles, sharing of a meal, and family, friends, and meals are great things to do on Sabbath or for Sabbath time, to rest, to just be with your family, enjoy some food and conversation. Great Sabbath practice. Reading and studying is a great Sabbath practice. Playing games with folks might be a good Sabbath practice. Making art is a great Sabbath practice. There's so many things you can do that step you away from the world of production and your value being only in what you do for work and how much money you make. And this really is an act of resistance. It's a blow against the pharaohs of the world. This month, actively practice resistance by actively practicing Sabbath. If you're already a practitioner, step it up. Have a Sabbath practice that's weekly, maybe one that's daily, and look for one you can do yearly to just take time out even for a day or a weekend. I would love to hear what you're going to do to practice Sabbath or increase your practice of Sabbath, so leave us a comment. If you enjoyed this month's spiritual challenge video, please like this video and share it with others. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, and please leave me a comment. I'd love to know what you think about this month's spiritual challenge. Check out my website and blog at TonyLorenzen.com for even more resources that will open your mind, touch your heart, and inspire your spirit.